for the military strategy piece, I'm going to have to go with a hard no. I mean, I was thinking the same thing in the first couple of years, excuse me, the first couple of weeks. Of sure feels conflict. like it, doesn't it? Yeah. I know. <laughs> What's that saying? For decades, nothing happens. Then in some weeks, decades Vladimir happen. Lenin. Yeah. Oh my God. Smart dude. <laughs> So that is definitely what I thought in the first couple of weeks, that, you know, there's just, there's a piece missing here. The Russians will plug it in. They're still going to walk over this. But as days go on, it hasn't happened. And only giving your troops two days of food to occupy a city of three million? No, that's not enough. For a convoy 40 miles long to not have fuel trucks? I'm sorry. That's horrible planning. There was an attack this morning. Sorry, it's uh, March 17th on the airfield at Kyrgyzstan, which is the one city that the Russians have captured, it came down the road from Mirapol, which is a road that supposedly the Russians control. And it involves air assets. And there's no excuse for why the Russians have not secured air superiority just yet. They've got their anti-aircraft missile batteries ringing Ukraine, giving them like 95% coverage. You know, Drones are still operating. They should all be shot down. The Ukrainians are still running 25 to 30 sorties a day. They shouldn't have an air force at all. We've seen pictures of airfields that the Ukrainians have been operating at that have been hit by over 60 munitions, but only one of them hit the runway. I mean, we're seeing this complete incapacity to use what we think of as fourth and fifth generation warfare that we thought in the United States that the Russians were not a peer power, but a near peer power. And we're seeing none of that. On top of that, we're seeing things that lessons they should have learned in World War II, and we know they learned in Grozny. You know, if you've got a tightly packed convoy, that means all the other guy has to do is hit the first vehicle and hit the last vehicle, and then they just dice up everything in between. That's happened dozens of times. The Russians have lost all the hard lessons that they've paid for with blood in previous conflicts, and it's just stupefying. Now, I do have a theory. And it folds into some of the other things that are going on right here with the why now. The Russian birth rate has been declining for decades. And when you have things like famines or world war, you have a lot of people who are killed. The birth rate in those years is significantly lower. And the Russians have had these things stack on on top of each other because there was World War I, then there was World War II, then there was collectivization, then there was Brezhnev. And at each stage, the kind of the melon scoop out of the demographic structure got bigger, with the biggest one of all being the post-Soviet collapse in the 1990s. Well, the people who were born in the post-Soviet collapse are now about to be all of um, the draftable population. The Russian demography is now in terminal decline. It is the second worst demography on the planet, second only to China. There's a topic we can kick into later. And so the Russians are literally running out of soldiers. If they didn't do this attack now, if they waited five years, it would be too late. They wouldn't have the army to try. And that has kind of melon scooped not just out their troops, but also their skilled labor and their leadership potential, and that includes their military leadership. So it could be nothing more than the Russian officer corps has become so small and so unskilled that this is all they can do. I have a hard time hanging my hat on that completely, but even if it's true, the Ukrainians are still going to lose this war. They're massively outnumbered, and the Russians have shown that they have a high tolerance for casualties. And the political situation in Russia is, has not turned against Putin. Sure, that we've seen protests, and of course, Western media has followed that with ghoulish detail. But we're talking about a country that has lost millions of people in wars in the past. We're nowhere close to that. And if you add up all of the protests that have happened throughout Russia through the entirety of the last three weeks, you're still talking less than one-tenth of one percent of the population. Most Russians are fully on board with this, either because they understand exactly what's at stake the future of the Russian ethnicity's existence, or they buy into the propaganda. And right now, that is the only information they're seeing. 